Hello everyone. Today we'll be going over some interesting shape information and size information of calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate, uh, what is it and what's it used for? Good question. So calcium carbonate is a substance that's normally found in the ground. Uh, it's a sedimentary rock uh, and it um, is really uh, mostly a limestone uh, material. It uh, has quite a number of, uh, of broad uses. Uh, it is uh, used in many types of uh, industrial applications as well as uh, personal use applications. And there's generally uh, two types of, uh, of, of calcium carbonate. There's one which is actually considered the precipita precipita sorry, precipitated calcium carbonate or PCC. Precipitated calcium carbonate is uh, generally a very fine uh, powder. Uh, it's uh, used as a very found, fine powder, and it is used in uh, mostly uh, quite a bit in the, uh, the paper industry, and we'll talk about that application in a minute. Uh, the other type of, of use of, uh, or the type of, of calcium carbonate was, was considered ground calcium carbonate, where uh, basically, the calcium carbonate is taken from the ground and mined, and it is basically a uh, milled into a very fine powder. So what are the, some of the uses? Uh, some of the uses are, are, are very broad. One of the uh, very common uses is used in, uh, in different paper and coating applications. Um, calcium carbonate is, is very useful in uh, coming up with very white colors and very opaque colors. As a result, it's used quite a bit in paper, and it is quite uh, used quite a bit in the paint industry as well, due to its brightness and um, its its ability to be very opaque. There are very broad applications in personal health and food production as well. It is used quite a bit for antacid and different types of uh, excipient uh, compounds for pharmaceutical uh, packaging. It is also used in toothpaste and in different uh, food materials. So again, very broadly used in the uh, personal health and food industry. Uh, again, pharmaceutical uh, excipient or filler is very common. So is uh, uh, baking supplies and antacids. Uh, it is also used in the building industry quite a bit. Being, uh, being a milled product that comes from the ground, it's used quite a bit as a component in cement. Uh, the cement uh, component is usually larger in size, so it's not milled as much, uh, but it's still very, uh, very commonly used in building materials. So we can actually uh, understand when the different uses are going to require different particle sizes. So the calcium carbonate must be processed. So as I mentioned earlier, there is precipitated calcium carbonate, uh, and then there's ground calcium car carbonate. Uh, the different applications will require one versus the other, and the different applications will also require different particle size. So as I mentioned earlier, the application for paper, for example, requires a very fine particle size for calcium carbonate, whereas in cement or building industry, it's usually a bit larger. So the paper industry, somewhere in the two micron, three micron range. Uh, in the building industry, it's it's uh, much higher than that. It's it, so depending on the actual use, there'll be different types of sizes that are required. So, as you can imagine, size is very important. And when size is made, generally in the industry of particle size. They are used. Uh, there, there are systems that are using indirect measurement techniques. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into a real brief discussion as to what the differences are in indirect and direct measurement techniques. But as we can see here, these are some images of different calcium carbonates. They're definitely not round. Uh, they're different shapes. So the bottom line with different measurement techniques is that there are indirect ones and direct ones. Indirect measurement techniques are not measuring particle size. They're, men they're measuring a phenomenon that is related to particle size. So in the case, for example, of laser diffraction, what we're basically doing is we're actually hitting particles with light and then the diffracted uh, light that comes off, we're measuring the actual angle. And we're actually using that to make a calculation and assume the particles are spherical and give you a particle size. 
Uh, sedimentation is a very common uh, application uh, or technique used for particle sizing of calcium carbonate. In the case of sedimentation, what we're doing is we're looking at the measurement of the, uh, the, the sedimentation rate. Again, we're not uh, measuring particles, but we're actually making an assumption with some mathematical calculations that uh, the particle size are related to uh, sedimentation. So many different techniques are out there right now. Many are very commonly used. They are indirect measurement techniques, and that's okay. That's fine. That works out well. The issue is, and the reason why we're bringing this application note up, is because in the many uses for calcium carbonate, we've come across users that have realized as these process, these particles are being milled, they're not round in nature, they're not flowing very well uh, down a chute, let's say when you mix it with a pharmaceutical excipient, or when you're trying to um, get a very uniform particle size, uh, assuming the particles around may not be the right way to go. So we have a we have direct measurement techniques. So direct measurement techniques are microscopy and image analysis. Image analysis really being a dynamic version of microscopy, an automated version of it. So with the direct measurement techniques, we can render particles as if they're round. So here's a perfect example of a particle that we can represent as a 100 micron particle if we assume it's round. But obviously, if we assume this particle is round, it's not going to flow very well if it's combined with different shapes. So that might have an, uh, an, a, a false sense of, of understanding when we think particles are 100 microns, they should flow very well because they're generally large. But if they're very, uh, very irregular in shape, they may not flow very well. That's where indirect measurements, I'm sorry, direct measurement techniques become more important to the user. So when we have direct measurement techniques, in this case, we're talking about image analysis, we have the ability of actually taking the, the images of the particles and actually we can, we can do measurements assuming that they're round, but we can also do direct measurement techniques. So as far as their width, their length, aspect ratio, how round the particles are, how smooth the particles are. So you get a lot more information, not just size. Why is that important? I feel it's very important because you can have multiple particles of different shapes and if you assume that they're around, they're going to give you a false sense of understanding. So in this case, this is a particle size distribution where we are assuming particles are round, circular in, in area. And if we look at a histogram, we assume that these particles are, are round and they're about 30 microns. But when in fact you look at the actual shapes of the particles that are, went into making this, this assumption you notice that they're very different. So as you can imagine, these round particles are not going to flow the same as these long particles or these rocky particles or very irregular particles. So this is a, a histogram made, assuming particles are round, of three very distinct shapes. So again, if we assume particles are round, uh, especially for uh, this application for calcium carbonate, you may be uh, getting a false sense of understanding of what's going on with your particles. Another nice feature with image analysis, which is a very up and coming technique, is the fact that you can actually look at the actual images of the particles. So not only does it give you 30, 32 shape measures, it'll also give you all the images of the particles which you could use to validate your process. And again, what we're talking about here is uh, dynamic image analysis, which are particles in motion. So you get particles that are moving very fast, many at a time at a, in this, on the screen, and you're doing the measurement techniques um, live and in real time. So at this point, let me switch over to some sample analysis results so we can look at that. So before I start the actual comparison of some calcium carbonate results, I just wanted to show you why shape is important. So this is a uh, shape uh, test image that we have, and we have particles of all different uh, sizes and shapes. So if we assume particles are spherical, equivalent circular area diameter, and we put a model over every measure, every particle, you could tell that if particles are round, assuming that they are spherical is an adequate assumption. But if you assume that they're round and they're not, uh, that's where you can get some interesting results. So this, assuming this particle is a 10 micron particle, uh, and these are 12 micron particles, and that's a 10, a 10 micron particle, obviously, um, 
very different particles, they'll behave very differently. So that's where the uh, assumption of, uh, of sphericity really goes away. When you have irregular particles, it's important to actually be able to characterize them not only by size, but also by shape. As far as, uh, for, for example, let's say circularity, we can measure how round the particles are, how smooth the particles are, the aspect ratio of the particles as well. Uh, so there is a uh, large number of, broad number of, of measurement techniques that we can, uh, measurement uh, parameters that we can use using shape analysis because we're capturing the images. So here we have a calcium carbonate sample that uh, we can open. Uh, we have all the different distributions, assuming particles are round. We can look at the number distribution by a, num a number weighted distribution, assuming particles are round, or we can look at the volume weighted distribution. Uh, we can look at uh, specific uh, numbers of particles. So for example, if we wanted to find out what, uh, how many particles we had, let's say greater than 50, we can actually go here and go to about 50 and we can say that there are eight particles. The nice thing about this is we can also go in and see those eight particles. So if we're, in, we're questioning what those eight particles are, we can go view what, those, what they are by going into the post-run processing. So we'll go into post-run processing and what we can do, we can look at just the particles that are, let's say, greater than 50 and look at the thumbnail images. So here we have the thumbnails. There's two bubbles here, but you could see some of the thumbnails, just the ones that were uh, greater than 50, I believe is what we selected. Or what we could do is we could go back and just look at all the thumbnails by just unclicking and just viewing all the thumbnails from the, uh, the results. And here we could scroll through all the, th the thumbnails. Now, I really... I really don't think this is going to be very useful when you look through all the thumbnails because it's just it's overwhelming to look through a hundred thousand thumbnails that we processed in a few minutes so i think the greater value is when you start looking at some of the uh, tools to identify the differences in shape so for example one of the tools is the correlation plot if this is a milled uh, ground uh, or precipitated uh, uh, calcium carbonate we can actually look to see maybe as the size change does the circularity change so uh, if it was a if it something was going on with the mill <clears throat> it's very possible that maybe the 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 larger particles were not as were not as round they weren't being milled as properly so correlation plots are one way to identify differences uh, we also have classification where you can actually look at the multiple populations of the different particles so for example if we have particles that are are very round in nature combined with particles that are very light we can look at differences in opacity and differences in size as well uh, what i will do for the the sake of not making this video too long is i'll compare two different results that we have so opening the two results i'll go ahead and let me just let's overlay the two results so i'll do unit uh, i'm going to overlay the two results that i want and i'm going to overlay the two calcium carbonate results and I'll do an overlay, not just a size overlay, which the size seemed to be very, very uh, similar, but let's look at the shape differences. So I'm not sure what the shape differences would be with the sample, uh, but we can actually look at uh, circularity, for example, see if they were different in roundness. And they're both pretty round, uh, equally round, uh, one, being, one being very round. So both samples are very, uh, very similar. We can look at smoothness as well. Uh, we could see that maybe a uh, slight more smoothness here in the blue sample. Uh, let's look at uh, maybe aspect ratio. And that really shows no difference. So these two samples will be very, very similar. But the benefit here is that you can actually do an overlay, not just of size, uh, but you could do an overlay of uh, all different types of perimeter diameters, bounding circle diameters, mean radius, circularity, smoothness, compactness. So quite a quite a large number of different um, of of different measurements that we can actually take uh, to look at the uh, the the differences in shape, not just the uh, not just the uh, the size. We'll get some that's a width measurements, some length measurements. Oh, those are very interesting, and then the aspect ratios should. 
Yeah, they do. So they correspond. So very interesting. Uh, I have some other samples for calcium carbonate. Let me see if I could open those up quickly. So here we have another calcium carbonate. I believe this calcium carbonate sample is precipitated and it is very small. I believe this one is being used for uh, paper industry. So let's look at some of the thumbnail images. That's the first thing I generally do. So we're looking at a number distribution, uh, pretty small particles between one and two, two microns. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that. So here on a number weighted distribution, uh, well, it's a number weighted distribution, but we, we show all 20,000 particles. We can see that they are definitely irregular in nature. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the, uh, the average circularity is. So let's just open some of these measurements and I'll see that my average size by number weighted distribution. So uh, my mean is about five microns. Uh, my mode is about three microns. So I can look at the, all the individual uh, sample measurements or I can open them up one at a time. I could look at circularity. I could look at smoothness. So I could see they're not very smooth, not very round, uh, one being very round uh, and, and uh, one being very on smoothness being very smooth. These are size independent. Uh, but again, I think where the greater value is, is looking at not just the thumbnails, but uh, I trying to identify some of the uh, some of the differences. Sometimes, again, what I like to do is I look at size versus, let's say, circularity. And we can actually make some assumptions to see how round the particles are based on size. And I can uh, make some assumptions. So one being, you know, if the as the majority are are higher in size, you would say that uh, the particles are going to be um, uh, flowing a lot easier. The ones that are less round and less smooth, uh, they're not gonna flow as easy and they're going to separate. Uh, again, if I had more time, I'd combine uh, and, and try to make a comparison between one lot and another lot, but we're running a bit late on time. So anyways, uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, it's an overview of calcium carbonate, again, Size is important, but I think, uh, I believe shape is also very important when it comes to making sure that these particles are flowing properly and they're uh, being mill, being processed, being uh, tableted, being compressed. Shape is always important. Thank you very much for your patience and for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.